hey, if you're shopping for an RV and you can't decide, should I go the lithium system or go the legacy generator? Or you're wondering what is different in the lithium systems that RV manufacturers equip their rigs with? Or you can't really figure out what lithium ion, automotive grade, it's really complex. What about auto start? What about drive to charge? What about charge on demand? Today, we cover all of that. Howdy, really appreciate you tuning in today. My name is Scott, I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing with you the learnings from the road in my 21 foot Winnebago Travado camper van, fully self-contained motorhome. And today we are going to talk about Volta. Volta right here. It's all about a lithium ion energy pack that allows me to run 30 amps of full coach service electrically wherever I am. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Walmart parking lot, I can run anything from inside my coach. We are really fortunate to have Buck, Vice President at Volta Power Systems, uh, the makers of Pure 3. Winnebago brands the lithium energy system that Volta makes, Pure 3. It's pure awesome, but Volta is the maker of that system. So we are really fortunate to have Buck with us today. This is a replay and kind of the best of a live Q&A event that Buck held with this audience. This was recorded middle of May 2020. Uh, over a Zoom call. So you'll see some images come and go, and uh, the audience comes in with some questions. You'll hear them, but you won't see them necessarily. Um, nothing wrong with being shy, that's okay. Um, I think you are going to really enjoy this. Uh, you get some new learnings here, some really specific information around some of those systems that make this Volta system so, so amazing. And in fact, the air conditioner you may have just heard, it's just kicked in. Although I'm here at home base for another few days, uh, I am not plugged into shore power. I'm actually running off my system right now in about 84 degree, very humid Florida weather, running the air conditioner and full coach service. State of charge, about 85%, which is pretty amazing. So if you like this kind of content, um, I would encourage you to visit my website, gosmalllivelarge.com. Uh, become a member of the audience. That would be really awesome. All it, there's no charge at all. Um, what it costs you is your email address. I will trust your, uh, you can trust me with your email address. I will only send you information about events like this that you're gonna see tonight. Uh, live events uh, for manufacturers, OEM, uh, experts, uh, channel events, uh, meetups. We just had one of those recently. And uh, if you'd like to get notified of those kinds of things and additional information that you won't see here on YouTube, um, please become a member of the audience. Again, cost you nothing, just sign up with your email address and password, and then that gives you a whole bunch of uh, access to PDF documents, like how to work from the road in your RV, um, RV departure checklist, and some other things in there. So visit the site, and with that, boy, let's, uh, let's roll right into the Q&A with Buck. And Volta Power System. Of why Volta became Volta. So, uh, Volta Power Systems was formed around automotive grade lithium. And automotive grade lithium is very different from consumer grade lithium in that it's what's used to move electric and hybrid vehicles. So, these are, you know, cell systems and uh, electrical systems that the automotive industry has literally invested B billions of dollars per year on developing this technology, which eventually they think will replace gasoline engines. So RV industry, truck industry, emergency equipment, and several other uh, industries that we serve, even if you put them all together, would not be able to amass enough interest to get in with any of these large manufacturers. You know, you have to start out with about a $20 million opening order, and uh, that's more than most of these industries do in a year. So Volta's idea was to take this technology, our, our company is formed mostly by engineers, and put it all together in a safe system and bring it to markets that could never access this power before, but where it would make a huge difference. So RVs was our first marketplace, started out in 2014. And uh, I'm sure many of our, our listeners and participants today know about our interaction with Winnebago and with our interaction with... Um, 
Indeed, uh, Storyteller Overland, Liberty Coach, uh, goodness, there are so many right now on our website, www.voltapowersystems.com. You can learn all about where our systems are available and who's got them. So that's a quick rundown on how we got to where we are today. So what Volta does is we design complete systems for the recreational vehicle industry. So in Scott's coach, for example, he has a Volta system that takes the place of a traditional generator. So not only does Scott not have a generator, but he has enough energy storage to run his coach overnight and then some, even including the air conditioner, without the noise, the smell, the vibration, the hum, etc., of the generator. So Volta's system makes this possible by taking that automotive technology with much higher density and longer lasting power cells and putting them into a system for RV users. So that's kind of the long and short on what we do and uh, how we came to market in the RV industry. That's awesome. That is a great summary. Um, and if you've ever um, listened or, or experienced a undercarriage generator, you'll know immediately it's like sleeping on top of your lawnmower that's running. Uh, not awesome. And I heard that once and that's all it took. I'm like, I don't want that. Um, and Buck is right. I've done a number of videos over the last, geez, year and a half on endurance tests, on uh, how long can I do DC power only? How long can I do uh, AC uh, on my old air conditioning system? So if you haven't seen those videos, you'll want to um, check out my website. Uh, there's a Volta playlist in particular and, uh, and check that out. Uh, so we got some questions coming in on the chat here. So let's kind of talk about, um, uh, Buck, the... Um, the auto start feature. So maybe just give us an overview of how it works and uh, why that's pretty awesome. So the auto start feature varies by manufacturer, but let's talk about your coach, for example. In the Winnebago Travato GL and KLL for lithium series, coaches feature an auto start system that when set up or armed or activated, as we say, will automatically start the engine of the coach and rev up to fast idle to provide charging via the Volta Auxiliary Alternator. Now, the Volta Auxiliary Alternator in Scott's coach can put out eight kilowatts at its maximum output. A typical generator installed in his coach would have been 2.5 or three kilowatts. So it's a very large amount of power at maximum output that has the capability of charging up Scott's lithium ion power pack very rapidly. It isn't 12 or 16 or 20 hours, it's one or two hours to fill it up all together if you're driving along at highway speed. Fast idling, it's not quite full output, but it does charge the system up pretty quickly. And I've, I've really used it uh, a number of times. Um, the first time it scared the crap out of me because you're sleeping, it's like three in the morning, and you're like, is running by itself it's it's magic until you you know once you get the little panic out of you and um i'll just also um say that there's two other modes so there's the auto start and then there's charge on demand is what i call it and then there's drive to charge so maybe just kind of go into the charge on demand so if you're stationary and uh, you want to just put an hour's worth of uh, high idle into that um you want to talk to that just a little bit Sure. On the Winnebago Travato, once you arm the auto start system, there's a button on the dashboard that you can depress to activate the charging system, starts the engine of the vehicle, speeds up to fast idle, and runs for approximately one hour or until the system reaches full charge, whichever comes first. So it's a way that anybody can select to top up the system, for example, before you go to sleep at night. So if you're going to be air conditioning overnight and it's very hot outside and you're running the air conditioner on a very low setting, it's a good idea to just kind of top up the tank of energy before you go to sleep. And this feature gives you the ability to do that. Same thing if you were going to go into a shopping mall and you wanted the coach to stay nice and cool inside. If you hadn't been driving a long period of time and you had just gotten in the coach, you might need to add some power so that you'd have enough in your, in your energy tank uh, to keep up with whatever your needs were. And then um, the other one that you talked about was drive to charge. So using the Volta's underhood auxiliary alternator that puts out eight kilowatts, when you're driving the coach, it is not only keeping up with any power you need, including running the air conditioner or anything else, but it's also charging your energy system. 
So when you arrive at a camp, for example, it's very likely that you will arrive fully charged. It's very nice because you are all ready to start camping. You don't have to think about anything. You can just relax and start to use your systems. What I discovered is as I'm driving around like town or in crawling traffic, um, you're kind of running errands. Again, if you, lo if you run your rig in lower gear, so for example, rather than leaving it in drive, so we'll downshift or actually upshift to, to sixth gear, have it max out at fourth gear on the, in the city streets and fifth gear on the, on the highway. What it does, it adds about another 1,000 RPMs uh, of rev, engine rev. But what it does, it allows you to actually charge in crawling traffic. And Indeed. I did a video on this and it's absolutely magic. And it's just one of the things I love about the Volta system is this complete degree of flexibility of uh, just charging while you're driving, charge while you're driving on lower gear, charge on demand, and then the auto start feature. Um, it's truly right. a, a magic system. No, I, I, you got it all. And uh, so what, what we tell people is that right there in the middle of their dashboard on most vehicles, especially the Travato, there's what we call the Volta Charge Strength Indicator, also known as the RPM gauge. So when your RPM's at idle, it's charging very, very little, and the higher your RPM gauge goes, the stronger the charge is. Now, you don't always need the strongest charge, but like you were saying, driving in slow stop and go traffic, your engine doesn't really rev up very much. By selecting a lower gear, you can, without harming the engine, you can force it to run slightly faster in RPMs, and because you're turning the Volta alternator a little bit faster, you're generating more power. It's important to note that that drag doesn't really change your fuel mileage at all. It's almost using waste, you know, movement. You're, you're already doing so much to move the vehicle and do everything else. You're, you're not adding very much at all with the small extra effort to operate the Volta alternator. And especially cruising along at highway speed, there's almost no difference whatsoever. So... It's kind of cool. You end up with all the energy you need and not having to really pay gas to do it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So Winnebago has the National Park Foundation Edition mm -hmm. Travados, which have an awesome color scheme on the outside, has some cool tires and wheels. Um, but most importantly, I think in that whole value proposition, there is the additional energy in their Volta system. Maybe talk to that a little bit. And what's, what you're thinking on, you know, that system versus one that, like I have. What's the difference? The principal difference is storage. The capabilities of the vehicle are largely the same. They have the same power source, the same DC source, they have the same alternator. They can mostly do all of the same things. What the National Park Special Edition does is give you a larger storage. So think like your car. If you had a moderate sized fuel tank or you had a larger fuel tank, your car would largely drive the same. You'd have the same engine and the same transmission, same wheels, all the rest of it. You just have a bigger gas tank. And really that's one of the things that the National Park Edition from Winnebago does is give you a larger tank of energy. That's very helpful if you don't want to start your engine or you tend to dry camp for longer or more extended periods or you really, really, really like your air conditioner a lot. So, um, <laughs> That's really what it gives you is a lot more storage, but the capabilities are nearly the same. Uh, what should they look for um, in a lithium energy system? There's a lot of them out there. Um, you know, Thor just got theirs out. Um, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. There's uh, the, the road track guys had theirs for a while. Um, there's just a lot of them out there and lithium you know, it's the buzzword, but it's not always equal, right? We talked about automotive grade a little bit, but what should somebody be have on their checklist as they're kind of going through an energy, lithium-based energy system in their RV? Well, you know, there, there are many different systems available in the marketplace right now. The big differentiator for Volta is that we're the only automotive grade one. We're the only people taking automotive technology, automotive materials, automotive engineering and know-how, and putting them into an entire system. So on the Volta system, the alternator, the power supplies, the inverter, the controls, the lithium cells, the steel safety package that everything is put into, just like a car, all is engineered by automotive engineers to work as a homogenous system. Other manufacturers who use the 12 volt consumer LiPo, if we will, lithium iron cells, which are really very good for some applications, but many of those 
RV manufacturers buy the batteries or the cells from one company and they get the inverter from another company and then they get the, if there is an alternator, the most of them don't, but if they have one, that, that comes from another company and they all kind of put it together on their own. Um, it, it really just kind of depends on what you want and what you need and what your value expectation is. So um, many people don't camp and don't feel that they need energy. That's why some Trivados come without the lithium system. So to each hers or his own, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it really comes down to doing your research, understanding what the differentiation between the systems is, figuring out what you need and what you want out of the value of what you invest in your energy system, and then making your decision. So the question uh, that I want to address, I get a lot again, is, is solar and lithium, um, is solar necessary? Is it, is it additive to the energy pack? Should I remove my solar panels? Um, how do they work together? So maybe just kind of give us your feelings and thoughts on solar and Volta. Um, Right. Well, certainly Volta works with solar. Um, all the Travados come with the Volta solar system in it, and they allow the, the Winnebago installed solar system to contribute charge to the Volta system. So the illustration I like to use is standard coach batteries might be compared in your mind to a kiddie pool you might get at, at a big box store. And, and you'd put the kiddie pool out back and you'd fill that kiddie pool up with a garden hose. And if it was a good sized kiddie pool, it might take two, three, four, or five hours, depending on how fast your water worked, to fill up that kiddie pool. Now, when you change to automotive grade lithium from Volta, you're bringing an Olympic sized swimming pool of energy with you. But your solar is still the little garden hose. So, is it filling the Olympic sized swimming pool? Absolutely. Does it help dissipate the evaporation? Absolutely. Well, let's fill it up from empty. Man, you'd need a little bit of time, uh, maybe a lot of bit of time. So <laughs> right. the challenge with Class B RVs is we only have so much roof. Now, Class A RVs, where you have a lot more uh, possibilities and a lot more space to put solar, you can absolutely live just off the solar that you harvest from the sun. My own Winnebago coach is a 42-foot coach, and I have almost 1,000 watts of power, which keeps my Volta system happy all the time unless I air condition. That's the only time I have to worry about replenishing energy or, you know, too many cloudy days in a row. Other than that, yeah, it, it works. So um, one of the great things that the Winnebago people include is a side extra solar connector. So you can deploy ground-based additional solar panels up to the limit of the system to actually, you know, do some charging. So it's really a limitation of real estate on the roof. You've got racks, you've yeah. got air conditioners, vents, roof vents, uh, you know, it's just tough because it's a limited real estate situation. And they look like the CIA are rolling in, right? There you go. <laughs> and I've done a video on this too. If you haven't seen that, um, I ran on DC only. Uh, it was the fridge, freezer, and ceiling fan in my Volta in my driveway. And it was three sunny days and two cloudy days. And I got about almost five days out of it before it went to 20%, which would have gone really another, probably a whole day. Right. Um, so a very strong system. Um, I get asked all the time about boondocking. And I think the limitation is not the energy system. It's going to be your water and, and waste tank. So right. again, it's a class B thing. Yeah. Hi, my name's Keith. I'm from San Antonio. And hi, I was Keith. curious, I was just curious about the, um, uh, whether or not the cold weather affects the lithium at all? All lithium, yeah, whether it's Volta or, or any of the drop-in solutions or any of the other 12-volt solutions, all lithium is affected by temperature. Now, the Volta system doesn't require active cooling. So in other words, as long as you are comfortable and, and the Volta system is located either inside of your vehicle, which is perfectly safe, or it's shared, like Scott's coach, it shares the air inside the vehicle by means of a circulation system. Um, if you're comfortable, lithium is comfortable. When it starts getting cooler, below 45 degrees, Volta's automatic heating system will keep the system at the right temperature for you to use it down to zero degrees. So that part of it is automatically managed for you when the system is turned on and, uh, and it gets cold, it's just, automatic you don't have to mess with it um that's 
kind of one of the positives uh, of our system. Some of the other systems, especially 12 volt systems in the marketplace, do not have a, a very robust automatic heating system like we do. Some of them may be developing that now, so I, I don't want to speak out of school, but none that I'm familiar with at this moment that have the kind of power availability that automotive grade has. Um, so a question from since 5.0, I don't quite understand it. So if you could kind of vocalize your question, uh, we'll see if we can answer that. Take yourself off mute. I'm reading it. I read, is this a 12 or 24 volt system and can the system be customized size wise? So I think I understand what, what this person might be asking. Okay. Um, Volta is a automotive solution, so we're 58 volts. So we're below 60 volts, so we're still considered low voltage. We're touch safe, there's no harm, you can't get hurt from it or anything like that. But um, the, the higher your voltage is, uh, the more energy that you can manage easily, the smaller the wiring is. And for example, uh, a 12 volt alternator like ours might only put out 2,000 watts, maybe a little bit more, whereas ours puts out 8,000 watts. So if you take 12 times four to get 48, you take 2,000 watts up to 8,000 watts. It's kind of sort of linear that way, but yes. But the Volta system is only 58 volts. Um, and can the system be customized size-wise? Yes. The Volta solution is fully scalable. Scott's Coach and the National uh, Parks Edition Travato have two of our most popular sized B-Van systems at either roughly 9,000 or roughly 12,000 usable watt hours of power. Um, and let's just take a hot second to talk about that. What's a watt hour? So in Scott's coach at 9,000 watt hours usable power, that means that if you had, for example, a hair dryer that took 1,000 watts and you ran that hair dryer that took 1,000 watts for one hour, you'd use 1,000 watts for one hour or 1,000 watt hours. To go 9,000 watts to use up all the power that Scott has stored in his coach, you'd have to run that hair dryer for nine hours. So we all know how much power hair dryers take. You turn them on, it's like the microwave or an electric fry pan, the lights dim and you know things, uh, things go down because you're drawing a lot of power. So that's a very long answer to your question, but yes, Volta is fully scalable up to about 100,000 watt hours of storage. Very, very large systems that are used in commercial vehicles. Um, we have mobile MRI clinics that go around in bus chassis that operate all day long, providing medical care to people, air conditioning to keep the staff and everybody comfortable. No noise, no pollution. A little bit. So Bernie, you have a good question here. Um, do you want to vocalize that for us and say hi to Bob? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, for someone that's perhaps thinking about having a Ford Transit van or something customized by Another company is in your website that uh, Oregon Motor Coach Center is an upfitter. So could they put something in a, either a, um, a Transit or a Sprinter that has uh, all the three or so different ways of charging uh, that you mentioned? And then I guess, how does your system compare to um, a system that a company might put together using like Victron components and uh, rely on batteries or like Battleborn batteries? Sure. Um, the first answer to your question is absolutely. Oregon Motor Coach Center does this as a regular uh, course of business and has done it many times with Volta Systems very successfully. Um, the transit in 2020 is now much easier to work with because there is a, an easy option that can be ordered in the chassis to make the installation of the Volta generator very, very simple. It's already very simple on the Sprinter. Volta and Mercedes-Benz um, cooperate together and there is a, an order option on the van that prepares it for the bolt alternator that simply bolts on. Very simple. Now in terms of the differentiation between Volta and the other systems, um, of course Victron makes fine components and there are many marketers aside from Reliant who bring the same consumer grade um, lithium iron, if you will, LiPo technology to market. Now, LiPo is, is a, a rather docile, consumer-grade product. It works very well. It's, it's not a bad product. It's just not as robust, as powerful, as power-dense, or as long-lasting. So again, same value proposition. 
it's, it's probably less expensive to buy, but it does have some limitations, both in terms of its capabilities, its durability, and its storage. Whereas automotive grade has much higher capabilities, lasts much longer, and is able to uh, store more energy up front. So the last way that I would characterize that for you is nearly 100% of all electric and hybrid vehicle manufacturers use the chemistry NMC that we use in our automotive grade solution. And nearly zero automotive manufacturers use lithium iron technology, the technology available in those systems that you mentioned. So again, it's a differentiation between the value proposition and what your expectations are out of the system. I would imagine that Oregon Motor Coach Center could do either of those kinds of systems for you, either a Volta or one of those other systems. Um, I have found them to be excellent to work with. So whichever works out for you, Bernie, I think they could take care of you. Um, so this is a great question from Rhonda. Rhonda, do you want to vocalize this for us? Thanks, Scott, and thanks, Buck, for um, giving all this great information. Um, I wanted to know what's the most frequent mistake that you see, Buck, that new owners make with the Volta system, and what is the best way, aside from reading the manual, uh, to avoid any problems with it? Well, um, you, you hit on something very good there, Rhonda. It's uh, how to interact with the system. They're used to futzing with it and, and watching this gauge and playing with that adjustment and doing all of that. Volta is one button. You push the button, you turn it on, it does everything by itself. People actually try to complicate it too much. And uh, that's, that's really about the only problem people have is they, they try to think that it takes a lot more. It's like driving a hybrid car. You get in and you push the on button and then you drive the car. You don't worry about charging the battery or anything. You just drive the car. And the Volta system in an RV works pretty much the same way. You turn the system on and then you just use it. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's a, the it's a magic of the green button, right? Um, the other thing I might add is the inverter. Uh, maybe um, speak to that, uh, Buck, the turn the inverter on or off. Sure. To, if, you don't, if you don't need 110 outlet power, uh, maybe just share that. Right. So the inverter, um, like all inverters, takes a small bit of power when it's in standby. What that means is the inverter is turned on, but you're not currently using any household electrical, like 120 volt AC appliances, like you're not running your microwave and you don't have, uh, you know, any kind of entertainment equipment plugged into that. You can actually go to the remote control panel. It's behind Scott on his left ear there. There's a, it's got the flying W on it, is the inverter control panel. That eh, other side. Oh, the other side. And um, there you go. <laughs> anyway, and there's a simple on off button on there, and you can simply turn the inverter off when you're not using it. So we like to say that it, it the engine, the engine in the inverter, it doesn't have one, it's just an illustration. The engine in the inverter is at idle. And, uh, and if you want to shut the idle off and stop wasting a little bit of fuel that you use in idle, waiting for someone to step on the gas pedal and use the motor, um, you can turn the inverter off. And so I'm using the illustration to say that the inverter takes a little bit of standby energy to be ready to develop and make power immediately whenever you ask for it. So if you switch on your air conditioner, there's no delay. The inverter immediately produces that energy without hesitation, dimming lights, anything. So that just comes at a cost when you're not using it. Punch the button and turn it off. It'll slightly extend the amount of, of time that you get out of your system before you need to add energy back in. Um, so Dan and Mary Ann, uh, do you want to add, uh, vocalize your question here? This is a good one. So uh, they want to know um, what improvements have happened since the 2019 models? And I'm sure you can give us all your secrets here tonight, um, Buck. Uh, anything new planned for 2021? Volta is, in being automotive, uh, as you know, the automotive industry is always changing, always moving forward, always has new developments, and Volta is in right up there with it. So as new cells come to market and new technology evolves, Volta is at the leading edge of that and looking to incorporate those features as our systems evolve as well. It's sort of like owning a computer. Very few of us are using a computer that we bought 10 years ago, even if it was still in good condition, its capabilities will have changed. And, uh, and technology just rolls forward in that manner. So um, the major improvements since 2019 are that the automatic heating system, at least in Winnebago's, is now standard in the newer models. It's retrofitable in any model. So it can be added, but not all customers go in climates cold enough where that's even a concern. Um, 
And as far as Volta as a company goes, not specifically with, uh, with respect to Scott's coach, is that we have many new innovations in the kinds of systems that we have that can offer different kinds of power, all the way up to 480 volts, three phase power. So Volta is being used to run large medical vehicles, to run fire truck pumps, to run ambulances inside, to keep them you know, comfortable and, and ready to go as they stand by and wait, or even as they help people without the engine running. It also gives them another level of safety. So if the ambulance was driving and something happened to the engine and it stopped, fortunately, all the important life-saving equipment continues to run on the Volta system for hours and hours and hours while help is on the way. So those are sorts of important things that we're doing in that field. And then um, the new things that Volta is very involved in now are the zero emission anti-idling initiatives in commercial vehicles and trucks, bus fleets, even off-road vehicles. Volta is very highly involved, especially on the West Coast, in implementing and developing systems that eliminate idling. So a lot of the gas, greenhouse gases and things come from vehicles. Like look at, look at the power truck that comes to help you when the lights go out. That truck pulls up and the engine keeps running and the bucket goes up and it fixes your light pole outside your house usually late at night, and because the lights are out, you hear all the noise of the truck and everything going on, but the Volta-powered ones, like Oklahoma Gas and Electric uses, are silent. When they pull up to a job site, they turn the engine off, you hear the little hydraulic pump noise to move the boom around, and then the only thing you hear is conversation of the workers. Um, the green <laughs> energy is quiet, and at the same time, it's keeping the cab of the truck warm or cool, air conditioner heated automatically with the system. So, lots of exciting stuff. Sorry, I geek out a little bit, but we get to do a lot of cool things at Volta, and it's a very exciting place to be. And I think it's great that you guys aren't just doing RVs. I mean, you do a whole line of things, right? And it's I think oh, that is cross pollination of best, best um, you know, performing products and, and learnings all come together, right? It's just really pretty cool. And Indeed. I would add um, to, for this audience, so there was a, a an app. And a Bluetooth module you guys added that's a DIY. So if you have one, and I'm eager to get to Holland so we can do this. Um, so there's little little iterations you guys have done over the, the last couple of years um, that somebody like me that's got you know one of the near first systems. So anyway, you can do these things to keep up a little bit, right? So you're not um, stuck in the in the Stone Age. I can add that Bluetooth module to my system. I can run the app on my phone and iPad. Um, so you guys kind of iterate, and uh, I'm not feeling like I need to go spend another hundred grand to get the uh, the latest and greatest, right? Because you guys provide right. some uh, uh, So um, one of the other, uh, I think I just am noticing here that Bernie was asking an additional question about can a system installed in 2020 or 2021 be upgraded to as Volta as new features? And yes, as it turns out, it can be. So in 2020 and 21, I think most of those vehicles, at least if we're talking about Winnebago, and Storyteller Overland and several of the other larger scale OEMs all had the heated system as standard equipment, I believe. But any of those models during the changeover that didn't, you can add that. But Volta now has, as Scott mentioned, our app. So any Volta equipped vehicle can be customer upgraded. It's super simple. It takes five minutes. You need a Phillips screwdriver and the ability to click connectors together. Um, that's it, super easy, it's available, www.voltapowersystems.com. Click on the e-commerce tab, you can order it yourself right online and upgrade your system to all the features that the 2021 systems have. You can read out all the features on your phone with the Bluetooth connected app that's provided free of charge, there's no monthly charge for the app. And the system will also give you a prediction based on the energy use that you've been using, how much energy you have stored at the moment, how long will the system go? So we were talking about that charge on demand feature. What a great tool to have the 2021 feature of the app to tell you, hey, using what you're using right now, you got 11 hours already because your, your coach battery is nearly full. Kind of handy to know exactly what you can do just by looking at the app. So yes, Bernie, that can be just upgraded and you don't even have to take it in. You can do it. Um, Buck, uh, any any suggestions, calls to action? How can they get learn more about Volta? 
Sure, as I, put, I, as I, as I plugged this before, we're www.voltapowersystems, V like victory, V, V-O-L-T-A, powersystems.com. And there are many tabs at the top of our website. Uh, there's a, a blog tab on there. There's a lot of videos that show the different applications. They can help answer questions. There's also a customer question form that we actually answer. We don't always answer them right away, but we usually get to them. Sometimes there can be a lot. Um, there's only a few of us in comparison to the thousands of questions that pour in, but we do our best. Um, there is links, rather there are links on our website. Um, as Bernie wisely pointed out, different approved builders, aside from our major scale OEMs, who do install custom Volta systems, for either vans or regular RVs or whatever kind of vehicle you have. So um, feel free to reach out on the website. If you have questions, there is a form, fill it out, and we'll try our best to get back to you. And I would add to that, thank you, Buck, that uh, you guys have a pretty cool YouTube channel. Um, there's some success stories there and, uh, yeah. and a lot of the kind of the you know, really short uh, how-tos. So if yep. you haven't um, been there, check those out, subscribe uh, to their YouTube channel. And um, yeah, the blog will take you there as well. So if they get to our website, www.voltapowersystems.com, click blog, and it will show you those videos. And then when you click to them, that will link you right into our YouTube page and show you the list of all the other videos that we have available. Some of those address um, the young lady, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, had questions about being a new owner. There are some videos there that give you hints and tips about how to operate your system and answer those kind of first few questions that everybody has. I think you're starring in a few of those, right, Buck? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, I just uh, want to thank you, Buck, for, for spending uh, a, a portion of your evening tonight. I really appreciate it. You're really going above and beyond here for us. And for everybody participating tonight, you guys, I just have the best audience, uh, seriously. Um, we have so many cool things coming up. Um, I would ask if you go to my website, keep an eye on the events page. Um, give me your email address. I promise not to do anything uh, you know, bad with it. I just want to send you information here and there about things like this tonight um, and, and the events we have coming up. Uh, there's a lot in the work. So if you trust me with that, um, I will respond in kind. So with that, um, thank you, everybody. Buck, any final? I just want to say thanks, everybody. I, I really enjoyed interacting with you. The thoughtful questions and the interaction are very much appreciated. It was a privilege to interact with you tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see you out on the road. True. Thank you, Buck. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, replay with Buck. I learned something. Um, I hope you learned something as well. Uh, so if you got something out of it, again, really give it a appreciate a thumb up. Please subscribe to the channel if you're into RVing, places, people, that this RV takes me to. I would love to share that out with you. Um, on my website, there is a page that I've recently posted called Under More, I believe it is, is audience recommendations. And these are kind of, this is how we roll here. We learn together and I share back out to you. And I am actually posting now actively uh, audience recommendations. They're kind of recommended to me, but they're recommended to all of us. So check out that page. Check out so with that, I thank you for watching. I wish you to live happy, live free, live RV. See you later. So is this cool to have channel audience folks show up for our meetup? Travato talk. Bunch of crazies enjoying the endless summer. Next time, join us. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Good job, man.